Okay. I'm Robin Block. I'm the founder and CEO of Creator VC um, and the executive producer of In Search of Darkness. I'm David Weiner. I'm the writer and director of In Search of Darkness and In Search of Darkness Part Two. Hello. Thanks, guys, and thanks for taking the time, you know, to talk a little bit about Part Two. And obviously, we've got the premiere coming up for the Dead Northern Festival. So thank you very much for letting us show that as well. It's going to be a really cool Halloween weekend. It will be. I've got so much respect for um, your determination to make this happen, despite every obstacle known to man being put in front of you. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I fully anticipate it's going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal event. You, you definitely deserve that. There's a real fun element watching this uh, on the big screen. Uh, it's definitely a challenging sit, so in two parts is an ideal way of doing it, but uh, uh, there's, there's some palpable energy when you're watching this, especially when you're moving around from poster to poster and you figure out what we're going to be focusing on. Uh, it's real fun to see what people get excited about, because usually it's, it's someone's favorite movie, and so very cool. Thank you very much for screening this film. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of perfect timing as well with you know, everyone's pre-ordering part two now. Um, and they, it's the perfect opportunity to watch part one before they, you know, before it arrives in the post. When is it sort of all due to come out? Is it sort of end of this year? When everyone gets no, the news? No. Well, well, basically, so um, the film itself is pretty much done. Um, you, we're only going to sell it during this pre-order period. So after midnight Halloween, it will no longer be available. Everyone that buys it gets their name in the credits. The actual concept for In Search of Darkness Part 2 is, I think, next level because we're really using entertainment as a way to bring everybody together. So the documentary is four and a half hours long, but it comes with a season pass to a year-long program of 80s horror activities. We're going to get icons from 80s horror movies, all your favourites to come in live and direct, join us for watch parties, special guest Q&As, hosted discussions. So it extends the um, entertainment value way beyond the four and a half hour runtime. This is over 65 hours worth of entertainment. Wow. Uh, and uh, the, what's going to happen is if you, you, you buy uh, before midnight Halloween on the 17th of November, we'll send you out the digital link so you'll be able to watch it then and you'll get your access and a schedule for uh, the first couple of months of the uh, community. And I'm really excited about that. So the community was a really big part of um, what we're trying to do here because our whole sort of raison d'etre, kind of our mission is to bring people together that love the same thing. And during this terrible pandemic, um, you know, it's never been a greater need. Um, and our whole thing really is community powered entertainment. So in Search of Darkness 1, which you're, which you're screening, that was crowdfunded. That crowdfunding that community the horror community gathered around to make this happen and it shows in the dna it, it's a love letter to 80s horror and what we try to do with part two is make it even bigger better badder and extend that experience because i think in search of darkness is like the ultimate comfort blanket for fans of 80s horror um, and it's a very indulgent experience yeah for sure so can you tell us a little bit about what movies that weren't in part one that get mentioned or sort of featured in this in part two and what new guests you've got as well all of them all of them <laughs> everything okay, so, uh, probably the best person to speak to is david because he he uh you know i will let me preface this we listened to the audience right and it was amazing like david and i were sitting in the premiere in hollywood at the egyptian theater the 600 people on the big big screen nervous i was very nervous and then, you know, people loved it and immediately socials lit up and you know, suggestions. Why didn't you do this movie? Why did you, you know, cover that movie? Could we see this person in the next one? And that kind of thing. And there was such a demand for a sequel. Um, but, and we took it seriously. So we actually surveyed our audience. We surveyed all of our customers, which were, you know, in the tens of thousands and fight, you know, and listened to them and said, what do you want in the sequel? Who do you want to see? And you know what? We nailed it. Awesome. Ditto of too. what Robin said. So, you know, what's, what's very cool about this is that, you know, we, we listen to the fans. I, I, boy, I wish I could put everything in there too, but 
I, ironically, four and a half hours is a very short period of time to cover an entire decade of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of movies. And so that was the real challenge. And uh, I, I decided to focus it on North American films and even some of my, my personal favorites, I just couldn't make the cut the first time around. So listening to the fans, listening to what they wanted, in addition to the very specific titles they, they asked for, whether it was Maniac Cop or Shocker, they, every, a lot of people were like, where's the Italian stuff? Where's the Argento and the Fulci and the Bava? Um, you know, Tetsuo, The Iron Man by Shinya Tsukamoto. That, that, that would, I'd love to see you guys talk about that. Uh, and we listened. And so, we actually, uh, among the new faces, what we're doing is we have, we have 15 new faces. I did 23 new interviews. So there are some repeat performances, but brand new interviews. And I created another four and a half hour movie with a larger scope. We're doing deeper cuts. Uh, a lot of the movies that uh, the, true, the true fans among the true fans really love uh, are in here. And there's also a world scope to it. So there's movies from Italy, from Australia, from uh, New Zealand, uh, Japan, Hong Kong. Um, we're trying to have more of a world view of 80s horror. And talking about Shinya Tsukamoto, the director of Tetsuo, I talked to him while he was in Tokyo. And so he's in our film. Um, Nancy Allen, Robert England, Tom Savini, Linnea Quigley. There were, there were some, some real top names of horror that we wanted to get the first time around. And uh, they, for, by hook or by crook, uh, we had a limited time and we had a limited uh, uh, number of people that we could get in this first movie, even though it's close to 50 people. So now we have 15 more plus uh, over 40 people carrying over from the original with material that's new and, and unheard of and it, it follows the same structure as the first one. So it's a very natural progression. First film, In Search of Darkness, goes from 1980 to 1989. Year by year, we go through a number of films, and then in between, we have larger context chapters. The heroes, the villains, the final girl, sex and nudity, the, the, the music, the score, the special effects. Uh, we're doing the same thing with brand new concepts, and uh, I, I really think that this is, boy, if the first one was a love letter, this is, this is, a, this is now, we're now pen pals and we're, we keep on writing to each other. You know, it's interesting, you mentioned Tom Savini, right? We really, really pestered him. Uh, <laughs> he's tough to get hold of and he's tough to, to yeah. kind of track down. And, and, he, and I, I have to interject real quick, he agreed to be in the first one. We could just never align our schedule. There was at least three of us on my team calling him regularly. I used to just ring him up, right? And I, you know, I'm a very determined person. And it got to the point where uh, I said to him, you know what, Tom, I really loved your documentary. And he went, you know what? What did you love about it? And I was like, okay, <laughs> I love this, I love this, I love this. Um, and in the end, it was uh, one of our producers, Jessica Dwyer, that sort of, uh, you know, we call her the YouTube whisperer because she's just so charming. You can't, you can't say no to her. Um, uh, she, she managed to convince him and he, and he came, came down and he did the most phenomenal, phenomenal interview. I mean, this guy is like a charisma overload and his stories are insane. Um, and he is 80s horror. So that was amazing. With Robert England, it was, it was crazy. Like it's almost, um, it's almost like he came to us. He apologized for not being in the first one. He said, you know what? I want to be in the second one because I because it was a hit and I like hits, right? And um, his agent was just an absolute dream to work with. She was phenomenal. Um, he, he gave us a lot, you know, I think David, you were there for about three hours. It was phenomenal. And, you know, we're, we're I really do believe there's an element that we're sort of capturing history. You know, these, the, the, the kind of, icons from this era are not going to be around forever and they have something to say and and with the passing of time since that era there's been a sort of recontextualization of what 80s horror is and means and and how it sort of ranks with where we are and i think that capturing this and telling these stories is very important um and i watched in search of darkness too um earlier early in the week and i absolutely love it i think it's superior to the first one i think the uh, the, 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 the customers, the fans are going to be in for a real treat. I'm so excited and I can't wait for the community 
um, to, to launch because every, every other Sunday for the last six months, we've been doing watch parties with special guests. So we've had uh, Jeffrey Coombs, um, we've had Laurie Cardill from Dare the Dead, we've had Kelly Maroney, we've had a whole bunch of people 